One of the most important parameters in the design of membranes is the separation factor. And the separation factor is defined similarly to the relative volatility in distillation. So it's the permeate fraction of our component A divided by the retentate fraction of our component A divided by that same ratio but for component B. But unlike distillation, our mole fractions of Y and A are not in equilibrium. They're just defined by their flow through the membrane. So if we have no sweep gas in our membrane, then the ratio of the fluxes passing through our membrane defines the composition of the permeate. And in this case, the ratio of the fluxes simply gives us the ratio of the concentration of each of our components in the permeate gas. Now, if we take, for example, a gas being passed through our membrane system, then we'll remember from the previous lecture that the flux is given by the permeability of the membrane divided by the membrane thickness times by our driving force, which for a gas is the difference in partial pressures between the retentate and the permeate side of the membrane. Or can be written as the mole fraction on the feed retentate side of the membrane times by the pressure on that side of the membrane minus the mole fraction on the permeate side of the membrane times by the total pressure on the permeate side. We can write one of these equations for the flux of each of our components in our system. And then we can also say that the ratio of these fluxes is just simply given by the ratio of the permeability of our membrane for each of the materials and the driving force for each of our components. Often the permeate pressure is a lot less than the feed retentate side pressure. So if we assume that the permeate pressure is actually negligible, then we can cancel out the terms relating to the composition in the permeate times by the permeate pressure, which just leaves us with our flux being dependent on the permeability and the mole fraction of each component under pressure on the feed retentate side. And we also know that as we have no sweep gas, our ratio of fluxes must be equal to the ratio of the compositions in the permeate. Therefore, we can rearrange this equation into the form for the separation factor. And this produces an ideal separation factor where the ideal separation factor given by alpha star is just e equal to the ratio of the permeabilities of the membrane for each of the two components. However, if our permeate pressure is not negligible, then we can't remove that from our equation. Though we can still rearrange our ratio of fluxes into the separation factor. And in this case, we generate a separation factor in terms of our ideal separation factor that we've just seen, the ratio of the composition in the retentate side and the permeate side of our component B and the pressure ratio which is just the pressure on the permeate side divided by the pressure on our feed retentate side of the membrane. It's then convenient to write this ratio of mole fractions between the retentate and the permeate side for component B back in terms of our original separation factor equation. If we do this, we then generate an expression for our separation factor 
in terms of our ideal separation factor, the composition of our component A on the feed retentate side of our membrane and our pressure ratio. This is an implicit equation for the separation factor, but it can be easily solved either just by using something like solver in Excel or the equation can actually be rearranged into a quadratic equation and solved explicitly. Now, if we're trying to design our cross flow membrane, as the composition changes as we move across the membrane, we can't just rely on a total mass balance. We also need to think about a differential volume elemental mass balance. So, for this, we can say that the, the fraction of our component in the permeate with a change of flow rate of that permeate is essentially given by the change of the material that passes through our membrane which is the change in composition and flow rate from our feed retentate side. So we can expand our DNX term in terms of the two variables and say that our YA with a change in the flow rate is equal to our XA with a change in flow rate plus our current flow rate with a change in XA. And we can rearrange this to give a differential equation. Now what we can do is we can combine our definition of the separation factor with our differential mass balance and generate an expression for our change in flow rate at a given flow rate at a particular point in our membrane in terms of a change of our feed retentate composition side A with the separation factor. Now if we assume that our separation factor is constant over the entire cut and this is generally true especially when our pressure ratio is small. Then we can integrate our differential position from a random position where we have a composition XA and a flow rate N to our final retentate composition and retentate flow rate. Now the mole fraction of A found in our permeate is obtained by integrating all of our values across the length of the membrane for our change in composition of the permeate product and the change in composition of the flow rate. So what we can do is substitute in our differential equation for the change of flow rate and substitute in the integral of that to produce an expression to be integrated with respect to the mole fraction of our component A on the re feed retentate side of the membrane to be integrated between the mole fraction entering in the feed and the mole fraction of A leaving in the retentate. When integrated, this produces an expression for the permeate composition of A in terms of the retentate composition of A, our separation factor, our cut and the feed composition of A. So again just like the fully mixed membrane system we get three key equations to solve. The first is the separation factor given by our flux ratio passing through the membrane. And for our cross flow membranes, it's usually a good approximation to take our XA as the feed composition of our X component. We have our equation that we've just generated combining our separation factor and an elemental volume mass balance across 
our membrane and of course we still have a total mass balance over the whole membrane with the cut. So again we have four unknowns, our cut, our separation factor, our composition of the permeate and our composition of the retentate. So if we pick a value of the cut, we can then solve these three equations to get the other three unknowns. So the differential rate of the mass transfer of our species A across the membrane is given by <coughs> the flux times by a small change in the area of the membrane. So if we want the total membrane surface area, we can obtain this by integrating <coughs> between our feed composition and our retentate composition. 